Yep. Okay, look, so here's what I was saying, Dave. We, uh, we're, well, we're in the house of David, and uh, let me put my house, let me put my hat on the house of David. Why? Because I feel like it. Uh, we just came from the uh, mem a memorial service for the great Christophe Pierre. <clears throat> and uh, well, let, me, like, let me give any, any, any criticism of the service. Let's just say that uh, uh, some people didn't get to speak uh, at the service. I want to speak now to, to the camera, whatever it is. Um, and what is is this? Um, I've been in theater. I was introduced to theater in, in, in 1967 at the Ming Rasnamo Company, in the intermediate class. But when I first came there, my first, you know, this is a project kid, you know, as <laughs> a project and all that stuff. And so this was my first real theater production, professional theater production, was at the Ming Rasnamo Company. Look, oh, just what am I saying? Seeing a theater production, and the production we saw. What I saw was the first production they ever did at the Negro Ensemble Company, which in my mind to this day is still the best production they ever did, uh, which was uh, the song Lusitanian Bogey. That, that uh, particular production uh, was, well, was directed by Michael Schultz, but the um, set designer, uh, I guess lighting designer also, when that maybe it wasn't also lighting, but the set designer was when Ed Burbridge. And uh, Ed, I was fascinated by the set, you know? Uh, it was like this, this contraption, you know, Moses gun would go up in the thing, this is like a, you know, you were talking, I don't know, it was, it was a contraption. And they did all kinds of things with this contraption, and I was just fascinated with this contraption. And it's the only thing I can call it. Uh, anyway, so, so I was thinking today at the, at the memorial service that the, and I remember I have, I've, I've been in and out of theater since, since, since that time, um, uh, intensely and not so intensely and around and whatever, doing a lot of uh, technical thing and, and stage management things. And then lately I just do audio dramas. But um, what struck me is that Christoph was the first person since that first, my first enamoration <laughs> with, uh, with, with set design that really, to me, was that kind of person that would make you, that would be a wondrous uh, ab about this. So that's one thought that I had, because remember when he did Oyawa, oh, oh, yeah, the first time I, I never knew the guy, never anything like that, so I met him, and you know, he came in with our production meeting, and you know, he was talking, and you know, I, was, I was like, oh, he seems competent, you know, I, I, don't mean it, I don't mean it like that, I mean, I mean, he seemed competent, but you know, he, he knew he was on his game, and uh, he says certain things, and blah, blah, blah. But I remember at some particular point, uh, as we started rehearsals, um, he, uh, he says, you know, there's this new thing out with, the, with this light thing. You put this light on, it looks like it's fire happening. But the way he was doing this light in his eye and all this stuff, it was like, it was like I said, oh, this is, this is my kind of guy. <laughs> You know, because he had this enthusiasm and this this uh, uh, thing about, about, what, about, about his craft, you know. But what was more important to me was that he made, a, a, in theater, so, you know, a lot of times you have to make a model of the set. Now you, David, have, have said that Christoph couldn't draw, you know, draw, draw a war for darn, you know, which, which is all right because he's, he built, he made these scale models of sets that was really great. And now, uh, I, I, was, I directed this particular production, uh, which is rare for me. I don't particularly, well, I don't, I don't particularly direct a lot. Um, but in directing, in directing this thing, you have to understand, directors have a lot of tricks that they do. I, I don't want to call them tricks, but they're tricks. A lot of things that they do to get things done. And one of the things I used in this, in Oya, was I actually, um, during one of the rehearsal processes, I took the model of the set and brought it upstairs to the rehearsal room. And basically, I told the cast, you have to, uh, you have to beat this set, you know. I mean, you 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 have to be better than this set. And I, I bet I told the, 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 the cast they were in competition against this set. <laughs> because now I was explaining some. Because you know the worst thing in a production is when you when you have um, when when you have uh, people coming out of your production saying that oh the lights were so good and the set was so wonderful and they're not paying attention to the, to, 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 to the play, to the action, you know? And so when I set this thing up, I don't want to say it was devious of me, but it was just what it was. I was basically telling the cast, this is, this is an incredible set. You got to beat the set. Now, I, I, I can't tell you for sure if that had any effect. Those were the set they would, 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 would,
Yeah, well, the Foley, yeah, that's, that's true. They was intending. It was yes, they was they was contending with all these other peripheral things, but they shouldn't have to contend with. But because I threw them in the mix, they had to contend with it. But the real thing I'm, I'm trying to say is that I think maybe not all, but some of them click, it clicked with them. They understood that if they didn't come up to snuff, everybody else was on their game so much that they would get they would get tsunami out. This fight was funny when you did it because the first person that came back did their character and tackled with David. Oh, really? Yeah. He came back as Osiris. He came back, he brought Osiris to the table when he came back the next week. I said, that's amazing. And at the same time, he is who he is. Yeah, he's sort of disruptive. And that's the other thing. But 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 but, but I just make all that I just say all that. I thought you didn't say that. Yeah, no, but I just I just say all that really just to say that Christoph Pierre uh, it's, again, sitting at the memorial service, I, I'm, I'm, because I'm doing a lot of academic work now, a lot of research, there's this thing called third space theory that I'm just working with, but it's, it, 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 I break it down like this. It's not what it is, but I break it down like this. Uh, the past is infinite. The future is infinite. And even the present, when, as, soon as, I, as soon as we say something, the present becomes the past, an infinite past. However, like anything, there's exceptions to these rules, or there's exceptions to these phenomena, if you will. And one of the exceptions is that as a human being, you occupy an infinite third space. So, what was so to me, how this all relates to Christoph is that basically Christoph was never in competition with, with, with somebody outside of the, outside of any of that. He was also always digging and in competition. I don't want to say competition, that's not true. He was always digging so deep into himself, into what I'm calling this third space of self. That's what made Christoph Pierre Christoph Pierre. He dug so deep into himself that he came up with these marvelous and these wondrous uh, concepts and, 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 and things, uh, ways of working in theater, ways of communicating the art, ways of, of, of advancing the culture, if you will. So that's what I think of when I think of Christoph Pierre and, and the greatness that, 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 that he was, you know, born on a Christmas day so many years ago and, um, and now passed, but, but, but certainly never ever, like Ed Berber, it's never ever going to be forgotten. You know, because of the kind of work, the quality of work, the the deepness, the 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 the, the, the going so far into one's creative self that you you illuminate all all, all that is that is true modern or just true right, culture. But there's something else you said that I think is even more important. Well, my concern is that, that I, again, that's what's happening to me today. My concern is that. The Barbara Ann Tears, Tunde Samuels, and Christoph Pierre's will not have a place, a, a really dignified place in, 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 in catacombs of theater as we know it in the future, of black theater. Hmm. They won't have a place that's strong enough, neither will Woody for that matter. Yeah. Because but they keep on doing the same thing. That's well, that's not, that's not so much they keep on doing the same thing. The breakdown for me is, is that the people don't know who they are. Okay. That, that these waves of people come, uh, okay. come, come, come into, into being. There's no mentoring. There's no mentoring to a point where there's no you should know this guy. You should know this, this, this guy. Uh, there's no body of work. See, there's no body of work about a Christoph that, that you can go back to Christoph and say, Except for some some tape of what Christoph was, <laughs> we have something that was placed. There's some some, there's some regular barber. There's a little bit of regular turn day, but most of these people don't have a, a body of work, a body that represents them. Hmm. They ain't like dealing with Shakespeare, or you deal with with uh, the you know, like you deal with the European uh, writers and artists who you know who they are because they got this body of work. Somebody's or, got. Or you have your own theater company, you have the Living Theater Company, or, or, or you know, whatever they, they you know, got. whatever they got. And they, even Ellen Stewart, for that matter. Oh, that's what I'm saying. She, you know, she was a while here. <laughs> you know, so, but they got my mama's theater. Yeah. You know, so that's, that's my concern. I realized that today, 
But I was doing them with Juve, I'm like, damn. That's why I, I had to stop. I, just, I said, I can't do no more. Ruby D. Lassie Davis have a body of work as actors, but not as theater people. Hmm. Not, as, you know, not even as activists. They have a body of work. And they were activists. Yeah. There's no body of work, nothing that says. When you say body of work, you, don't, you mean just, just a, a, a pearly victorious hair or something like that there. It's not a body of work. Right. Exactly. It's just a play or two or exactly. whatever it is. So there's no continue. Yeah. Okay. Well, even, that's interesting. No, no, this is this interesting as you say that because if you look at my, for instance, I'm, I'm talking about me right now personally for something else because if you look at, I can trace my audio drama, I have a body of I audio drama work. I know, I know you have a body of that's, that's what I was referring to. And it's to. weird, it is weird because I don't have a, a body of theater work. I mean, I have plays here and there, you know, all of play in India, play, whatever it is, but I don't, you're right. And why is that the, that we as as black uh, uh, cultural people we don't what we don't we don't document our shit that's really, we don't document it um, I document most of I have I documented I lost some stuff on the story but most of the plays I've done I've documented to some to degree um, because I had to. And which is why I told my son, my oldest son, that if I die, I find myself on the sidewalk, he's going to be one haunted motherfucker. Because what I find that my friend stuff, people that I'm, or my, my, my mentors, some of my peers, some of my contemporaries, they die and their stuff gets thrown out in the street. Yeah. You know, you find, it's, not, it's amazing to me that, that and people don't value them. It's like, I'm looking at the thing that annoyed me today. And uh, I mean, and I'm, I was hoping that it wouldn't be brought up. Oh, we can't do this. I'm going to say something I'm going to say. Okay, well, don't say that. Let, 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 I, want to end, I want to end this by just saying this. Because something else was we, we talked about earlier. And it's not that, I, I don't even want to talk about mentorship. I'm just talking about a continuation. Because even at that ceremony, there wasn't a whole lot of young people, the next generation actors coming through. And I think people say, oh, where's the young people, where's the young people? But it's not the young people's fault. It's, 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 it's you, if, if you, as, as, a, as, a, as, a, as a working person in theater right now, didn't bring a young person, a, a young person somebody you're mentoring to that thing, that's not on them. No. But see, let's say, Jason, we're an example. You see C. Kelly, right? You know who sang? The yellow dress. Yeah, yeah. She's a young person compared to the rest of us. Oh, okay, okay. And Christoph helped her a lot. You got Ron Haney. He's a young person. He really fought. See, we got to deal with what we got to deal with. My life in theater didn't show since I was in my late 30s, early 40s. I'm looking at these other people, their lives didn't show since they were in their late 30s, early 40s. We're like, we're like, the way something be acknowledged in the theater. In black theater. Yeah. Right? So, the person that I, that I mentor, if I can mentor, I'm too busy hustling for a job. To mentor anybody. I mean, I can mentor them now, because I'm comfortable. But I wasn't comfortable. <coughs> there was no mentoring nobody. Just trying to get my shit together. Yeah. Well, look, man. Let's 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 end it here because we will we'll wax wherever. I just wanted to bring that one point because I want to stay on actually. Chris well, we, 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 we that, I hate editing. This is theater. How do you edit theater? Please. All right. Good point. <laughs>